Well, the driving force behind me making the Hornet is that I had, you know, in racing, racing is about going fast. How do you get to go faster? Well, you take what you have and you improve on it. I thought that the boxy shape of a typical uh, drone frame, it's not very aerodynamic. So I felt that was the spot to improve on. So I went, went to work, drew on a little bit of my, my experience on aerodynamics, and I came up with the Hornet 1. So using the same exact electronics as the people I was racing against, I'm 20% faster. So I knew it was, it was a success. And why is it called a Hornet? Well, my kids looked at it and they said, Dad, that looks like, like a bug. Looks like a bumblebee. Well, I'm not really happy with bumblebee. It's not a very competitive, fierce animal. I think a Hornet, a hornet fits it. Me, me, just my, my background, I'm kind of a tinker, I've, I've been a builder, I've been a designer of all kinds of hobby stuff in my, um, my garage. And so I decided to, to try and mess around with making it faster. So I, I just kind of put my thinking cap on. And you know, I have experience with composites, with, uh, as a machinist, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty qualified there. So putting all those things together, I, I was thinking, you know what, I can make some kind of a carbon fiber. So I dug up some epoxy and some carbon that I've had laying around the garage for 10 years. I said, you know what, I finally found the thing to put it to, put it to good use. So um, basically, I have a, a couple things to show. Here's the, uh, the Hornet 1. I don't know, can you see it? But uh, this is really just a 250, based, based on the Emacs components, 5-inch um, prop frame that I came up with. See, so it has some pretty uh, interesting curves to it. And this I built just kind of as a labor of love. It was just an unimaginable amount of time that I put into this to get it moving. Um, you know, as all the parts came together, if, if you really were interested in seeing the story, you could probably get back on my Facebook page, Steve Kramer, and look and see on all my, my uh, past history, and you can see all these, uh, all the, the wooden blocks and the, the way I came about all these things. Um, so anyway, so this, this aircraft, actually with the same Emacs motors that I was racing all my friends against, um, probably another 20% faster. Um, the design kind of evolved. Initially I wasn't intending to have tails on it. And you can see the tails are kind of, they pretty, not really well survived the times, but um, just as a, as a function of how much cross-section area there is in the front, I had to add the tails in the back to make it yaw stable. And with the tails, it actually kind of tracks straight through the air. It was, it was pretty cool. So it's the battery sat on the bottom. So this is really the beginning. The fuselage sits level, the, the props set on, I think, a 12 degree plane, tilted forward which um, gave me a bit of an advantage. So I flew this for uh, probably six months. This, this airframe lasted, it served me pretty well. Um, and then when, when it kind of, uh, kind of died, and I guess I can show you that one, one motor mount's missing, I was in a multi-GP race and tore off one of the end of the motors, that was the end of my day. Um, but you know, I said, it was uh, up in Melbourne, which is about an hour drive from here. So I, on the way home, I was my brain was screaming with all kinds of new ideas to, to improve this. Um, I really liked the way the, the motor tilt work, you know, tilt the plane, the fuselage, the streamline. This worked. Worked as a proven concept. So I figured, how can I make this more producible? How can I come up with a better design so that I can make more of these? Because because the, this was extremely complex. Each part, each part is really difficult to make. They're all hand carved and. It just is not a production idea. So, um, moving forward, I came up with, so I call this my Hornet 1. So, I just got H1 on the tail. So, this is where it all started. Um, moving on, I, I came up with this design. This was uh, several months later, it took, it took me to, to come up with this design, but just what I call the Hornet 2A. It's um, looking good. All right, cool, excellent. I'm getting thumbs up for my camera person, camera one. Can I mention you guys? Sure. All right, cool. Cool, I want to thank Courtney and Dustin for being here to support my, uh, my operations and my craziness and, and however this thing proceeds forward. This is, this is, again, an experiment for me and just in how this whole thing uh, is evolving as a business and business owner. And I guess if you asked me three months ago when this concept started, I probably would have never guessed that I'd be sitting here talking, <laughs> talking on, the, on uh, Facebook. All right, back to the story. This is uh, what I call Hornet. 2A, which this uh, has, you can see it has the same overall shape as the 2B, which is sitting right here, they're direct descendants, but if you really were here in the my house, call it a studio, whatever, um, you can tell the fit and finish is absolutely awful, but it, it was really to prove the concept. Um, 
you can see that's a cross section. It, it's actually made as a long piece and then cut into small sections. So that was the, the improvement uh, to try and make it more producible. Um, this first go around, I ended up making the, uh, the fuselage a little too thin. And I also used some Kevlar that I've had laying around the, the garage for about 10 years. And what I've come to find out later is the Kevlar, as it ages, um, it doesn't bond to the epoxy very well. So up here in the nose of the aircraft, it um, ended up coming desponding, because desponded. So I learned not to use Kevlar in this particular lab, particularly aged Kevlar. So uh, that's one of the, the advancements that's come about. Um, also, I mean, the overall design is similar, but these wings actually are not identical to these because these, this was made basically on a piece of two by four that was covered with a release agent that I carved with a chisel. You know, it took me an entire Saturday just to make the molds for these. Um, whereas this, I machined. Speak up, speak up. Speak up, all right, speak up a little bit. Um, so this one I actually machined all the molds on my CNC mill out in the garage and um, you know all, all the molds are a lot more precise, they're a lot better fit and finish. Uh, anyway, that's a different story. Or a continuation of the same story we'll call it. So uh, where were we? We were in uh, 2A which is this machine which if you really had it uh, close you could see there's really just awful fit and finish. So it's just kind of a, I, I wrapped it by hand and then just kind of made the, the location of all the holes and whatnot just with a Dremel tool, just kind of carved out by hand, um, which was to kind of prove the concept, to prove that this could be a viable machine. Uh, it turns out that because it was so thin, it was really not torsionally stiff, and I needed to add a whole bunch of other hardware, which really kind of offset the effect of all the lightweightness. Louder, okay, all right. I'm gonna run out of voice soon. All right, um, there we go. So, so basically that's, that's why I flew this one for a few months and uh, it worked out very well. It proved to be fairly durable. Uh, it ends up meeting its demise. I hit a, uh, a steel fence post. See how that came apart. But it was a good proof of concept and I had a lot of success with it. So then basically that just leads me into uh, the next iteration of the same frame, which this time because of the, the braking and the, the difficulty with the, the first bit of Kevlar, it had uh, some Kevlar composite or car Kevlar carbon hybrid that I <clears throat> used to get this machine going, and it turned out to be substantially more durable. Um, this one didn't laminate, but you can still still see that it's a little bit too squishy. So again, I go back to the drawing board and I make these two frames a lot thicker. But one of the problems with this is that if you try and make this in a long piece, you can't get it off the mold because of its shape. And then one of the other problems is that on the back here, the fit and finish is really terrible because as the, the vacuum is, is put on the, on the part, this extra material has to go somewhere. So basically this was a successful design, but because of fit and finish, I had to develop or had to split it into a top section and lower section. So this machine went well and I ended up dismantling it to put, it into, put all the pieces into a Hornet 2B. But this actually served pretty well. If, if you guys were at CFL FPV, maybe some of you were there, you would have recognized this. And I had a pair of these flying. It was actually this machine and another one that's still up in my attic. Um, had lights, we did a lot of night flying. It was actually pretty cool. I got a, a lot of good reviews on this. So with that encouragement, I went back to the drawing board again, ended up developing the top and bottom half and uh, some other refinements that end up becoming the, um, the carbon horn as you know it. So this is, this is the, the newest machine, and some of the, the major refinements here are that there's a top and bottom half. I did a little bit of work, design work, on the, uh, the camera mount. So you can see that it's, it's a lot more stout, it's a lot more finished. It's, it definitely doesn't, it doesn't move anywhere on impact, and it protects the camera really nice. Uh, and then also you can see that the um, side frame, if I put the uh, two side frames together, you can tell this is substantially more, uh, more robust. So if, if you really pick this thing up and you put it in your hands, it doesn't twist all that much. I'm putting quite a bit of force in here and it's, it's not going anywhere. Um, initially when, when I first came up or put this frame together, I had the wings actually bonded on with a, a type of self-curing rubber material. Um, but one of the things that ended up happening is that the, uh, there was a, a sort of vibration issue, just the, the overall dimensions of the frame. Um, 
I had to figure out how, with the newer flight controllers, how they're real sensitive to vibration and how to try and mitigate that, that problem. So I actually uh, came with the situation of, of bonding the, the wings on with this double back tape. Um, now I've had, a lot, I've had a lot of resistance with the double back tape because I know it's not a, uh, an industry standard. It's not a common way to do things, but most people think of the, the white foamy double back tape that you buy at the hardware store, which I agree is not the best product. But this stuff is, a, is an industrial grade 3M product. It specifically has damping qualities in it, which you know, will, will alleviate some of the vibrations um, caused by the motors, you know, prevents the airframe from, or the fuselage from experiencing that. And then also to protect the, uh, the flight controller from the, uh, the vibrations, I came up with a, a uh, nylon bolt uh, rubber isolator to actually mount the, the flight controller in, which also helps to, to get rid of some vibration. Um, one, of the, one of the other problems that we have, can you hear? A little louder. All right, one of the other problems we have is that these, uh, these wings, because of the way I design them, it's, there's a lot of labor involved in making these, um, they're expensive. And if you want to replace them, you obviously don't want to pay a mint every time you break it. So to try and prevent it from being broken, one of the other, the other ideas with this tape is that it's like a fuse. It's like a mechanical fuse so that if you have a super hard impact either on your motor or on the tip of the wing, instead of the wing breaking, the, um, the wing comes off. But you can say, oh, I don't want my wings coming off all the time. But if you check out some of the videos I've posted on YouTube, you'll see some absolutely abusive crashes where these things stay put exactly the way they are. So go check it out, um, go to my, my uh, Facebook page, I'm sure you're already there if you're watching, but you know, check out some of the YouTube videos that are associated with it.